here is yet another bone tutorial. This tutorial we're going to uh, do a very very simple IK setup just to get you started with using inverse kinematics which is uh, one of the main features of using bones uh, for animation on characters. Uh, we'll hit control N, bring, build a null object so we can add bones, we'll add a bone and I'll s go to my uh, right view, I'll angle it down, shift R to change the rest length equals key uh, y to rotate equal to add a child and shift R and we're gonna bring this one down so what we have here <clears throat> we have here is a very very basic uh, it's gonna be like an arm or whatever and uh, it's gonna be a very basic uh, item that's just going to try and reach a goal object um, remember this null here is not a goal object this is the what we're using as a stand-in for a mesh so um, how do we get this uh, chain of, of bones to go and try and reach an object the way an arm would, would go out and try and reach for something? Well, um, we're going to add a, a, a goal object, a null, and we'll call it goal, and we'll move it over here. And now we'll start messing with the motion options for these bones. And what you have to do is you can uh, basically start in any direction, but it makes more sense just to start the base. So we'll select this bone. And uh, for me, before I ever do anything, I always do uh, the record pivot rotation. If you're in the parent system, you'll see that these handles, uh, again, my rant from the last tutorial, you'll see that these, I can't, these handles um, are all messed up. And that causes me untold chaos and problems. So I'm going to go to modify orientation, record pivot rotation, or just shift P, and that will record the pivot rotation, the starting pivot rotation of these bones and line them up correctly so that now <clears throat> when we animate them we won't have any problems. And I'm going to go back to shift F7 go back to my local coordinates so when I do animation it's all going to be in local space. Again this is me, a lot of people say not to do this because it causes problems. I know certain uh, plugins don't allow you to record the pivot rotation but I can't live without it. Uh, anyway, now we have the bones, we have a goal. Uh, let's hit M to bring up the motion controls for this goal. And as you can see, you can set things like a goal or a target or a parent. If you go under controllers and limits, you'll see a bank for each of the three rotational axes. And right now, they're always set to keyframes, but you can set inverse kinematics to control that rotational axis. So if you were to set inverse kinematics for all three of these, that means that this bone, no matter where you move, this goal object, this bone is going to try and reach it with all three of its axes. Let's, since we're doing a, a very simple setup, let's turn on only the pitch, which is that green, the green arc here. And now we'll go down to this one, and we'll set the pitch to be controlled by IK, and then we'll go to this one. And now, because this is the last bone in the chain. Uh, it doesn't need to be controlled by IK. It's just there as, as a pointer. And usually if you're setting up something like an arm or a leg or something like that, you're going to want to have a little stub bone at the end as your kind of pointer. If, if you only have, if you well, you'll see in a second here how I set this up. Um, let's go ahead and go to IK and modifiers, set our goal object, and then turn on IK. And as you'll see, a line gets drawn from the the base bone that's being controlled by IK to the end bone. So now if we move this around, nothing happens. Why is that? Because once you activate your record pivot rotation tool or various different tools, IK will get turned off by default. So if we go down here and enable IK, we'll see that the bones have jumped into position. Now when we move this, you'll see that these bones will try to reach that goal on their, their pivot axis. If we move it left and right, it doesn't do anything because we've only set the um, the pivot axis to be controlled by IK. So let's set this one since we're doing sort of an arm setup. Uh, we'll go back in here and we'll change all these rotational axes to go by IK. So now, no matter where this uh, goal moves, the bicep bone here will try and reach reach out and try and, and, and get to that goal. Now the other bone here, the forearm bone, <clears throat> is only going to bend because we've only selected the, um, the pitch to be affected by IK. 
if we were to set this up to be IK, you'll see a, a bit different solution here. Sometimes you'll get some sort of bending around. So now, as you'll see, they'll, they'll all rotate and spin around to, to reach that. We, that's not really what we want. Now again, the, the reason for having this little stub bone at the end is to control the end of the I, IK chain. And uh, I've come into a lot of problems with IK if I don't have this. For example, if we were to go into the stub and turn off IK and turn off the goal object and then go to this one and have this one be pointing at the goal object instead, well now as you can see, the uh, the line goes right to the to the base of, of the the last bone that's being controlled. So the uh, the IK uh, solver doesn't have enough bones to to solve for how to reach this goal, and uh, it causes um, weirdness like this. So we'll turn that off, and we'll go here, and we'll go back and turn that on. And now let me select the goal object it's behaving correctly again. You need at least three bones, I would say, to, to have a chain that's going to operate correctly. And the more bones you have in a chain, uh, the less accurate it ends up becoming. So instead of having a long chain with eight or nine bones controlled by one goal object, you might want to have four or five bones controlled by one goal and then have another uh, goal for each set of uh, four or five bones. So that's the basics of, of how that works. It gets actually very complex if you set up other rigs, uh, more co complex rigs, but uh, this is just the bare bones of it. Uh, one more item before I leave is, um, let's go back to that little stub bone there. And I'll show you some of the other items here. Keep goal within reach. Uh, let's, let's turn keep goal within reach off. <clears throat> So keep goal within reach. Um, now, if we move this goal object, we can move it past where the bones are. It can go anywhere it wants. The bones will keep trying to reach it, but it won't. They won't get to it. If you don't want that, if you want the the goal to just go out to the maximum length that the bones can go to, select your bone object and use keep goal within reach. So now, when you try and manipulate that, you'll see it. It doesn't allow you to the as you'll see, the, the little icon here is moving, but the actual uh, item itself is not moving. I usually turn it off so I can move it to anywhere that I want. Oops. All right. The other thing that's very useful in setting up rigs is match goal orientation. And what that does is we'll hit select our null and we'll rotate it. <clears throat> and so, as you can see, the little stub bone is rotating, rotating exactly with the uh, the null object. And this is useful for, let's see here, for example, if, if this was an actual foot, um, a leg or something like that, you would want the, you would want the, the foot to, to be controlled by the, uh, the goal, the rotation of the foot to be controlled by the goal as well as the position. So it, you wouldn't have the foot going through the floor when you stamp down. Uh, I hope that uh, makes sense. I'll, I'll show you some more complex rigs later on.